There's a lot of really bad stuff going on in the world right now that I probably don't even have to mention by name because it's so in our faces every single day. And during times like this, when everything is just so horrible and people are doing all kinds of terrible things to each other, people like me uh, will start to feel hopeless. Like everything that we do is pointless and futile and that the future is just doomed. We feel this way because we have such a powerful love and care for the world around us and everyone living in it. Like, we just care too much about people and the world and society and just everybody. We care too much. And in those moments where we start to feel buried by the sheer horror that is reality, uh, we tend to ask the universe a simple but also very complicated question. Why go on? I mean, it's the year 2020, but race, gender identity, sexuality, all those things are still very, very divisive issues that people will not stop going back and forth over. Human trafficking is rampant as ever, if not growing steadily worse. And whether or not we're diving headfirst into a climate apocalypse at some point in the near future is still a debate that you can choose to believe or not believe in. And not to mention, we're more than six months into a global pandemic for which, due to human negligence, there's no end in sight. There's just so much to be angry about. And to someone like you or me, it definitely feels as if we have no influence whatsoever on any of it. And the more often we wake up in the morning, check Twitter, and see that someone new who was completely innocent has gotten shot and killed unjustly, the more numb we become to its repeated occurrence. I mean, wow, someone just got shot with a gun and killed? For no reason? What else is new? Oh shit, we're retweeting another lost child poster? What else is new? Oh, Donald Trump has tweeted yet another hilarious meme? What else is new? So I think it's one of the most valid questions that can be asked right about now. What reason is there to go on? Like, you and I already struggle enough with depression and anxiety and just sheer lack of motivation. Even if we were someday able to just get over all of that and figure everything out and be able to sustain ourselves and keep ourselves mentally healthy, what reason is there to keep living in a world where everything is so twisted and backwards? Why go on when there are so many unspeakable things happening to so many good people? Why go on when everything is just so unfair? Well, I'm not here to say that uh, you should just say fuck everybody else and think only about yourself and focus on only yourself because that, I'm pretty sure, is what like the government and just society at large wants us to think. And that mindset only leads to further division between people. Like if we're all only focused on ourselves, none of us are focusing on anybody else and that's essentially where the bottom of all our problems stems from, I think. So when I'm stuck with the question, why go on, it eases my mind to remember a couple things about the aspects of reality that you or I can't control on our own, such as the state of world politics, disease, spread, uh, internalized and societally ingrained biases, rape, murder, and so on. All of these things, sad but true, have existed in some form or another all throughout human history, and these things will continue to exist completely regardless of you. You did not create this world, nor are you personally responsible for what happens in it. You were merely placed here in the situation that you're in without asking to be. So the fact that you are letting the entire weight of the world hold you back and get you depressed 
That tells me that you have a one in a million sense of empathy that you should be proud of. But it helps to remember that you have no obligation to remain so invested in something so far beyond your reach. And you have no obligation to feel bad because you think you're too unimportant or too uneducated to have all the answers and to be able to execute them in order to fix the world. Unless you're in a place in your life where you feel adamant about being able to actually engage in politics and fight for the rights of people, uh, that's not your job. You don't have to do that and you don't have to place that responsibility upon yourself if that's not who you are. So I suggest you try this. Take one day away from your favorite social network. Just one day. One day's break from all of the ruckus and the hubbub. I'm willing to bet that if you do that, and the longer you go away from all of that stuff, uh, that you will start to feel the weight of it easing off of your shoulders. And guess what? Genocide, terrorism, and government corruption will all still be here when you get back. And if at that point everything still feels equally bleak, you're not alone. There's a Vsauce video that piqued my interest some time ago about human extinction. Not only are the vast majority of us feeling pessimistic about the future of our species, so is science. Since the Earth first formed however many million billion years ago, it has already gone through a handful of extinction events, which each pretty much wipe the face of the Earth clean for a complete reset on the concept of biological life. So while humans are the first species smart enough to potentially figure out a way to out-survive the very sun that granted us life in the first place, the odds are not in our favor. But that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Every single time the Earth was reset in this manner, the byproducts of those resets directly influenced whatever era of life came afterwards. Without millions of years of dinosaurs doing the same thing every single day, we wouldn't have flowers, or little duckies, or even you. It took billions of years to happen, but eventually, all the atoms that make up your body and your mind finally coalesced into the central hub that is your existence. What could have led to this sequence of events occurring other than sheer willpower? Maybe the very will to live that keeps us all from accidentally killing ourselves is the same will to live that forced us into being in the first place. After all, we're not asking ourselves why go on because we've admitted defeat and we want to die. We're asking that question because we don't want to admit defeat. We want to live. and. We're hoping for a positive, optimistic answer. And I feel like that's a pretty good start. The fact that you've developed the emotional capacity to give a shit is a great reason to go on by itself, especially in a world that is so seemingly devoid of that emotion. Think of the people that punch down, take advantage of others, and contribute to all the world's raging negativity. I think the last thing they would want to see is someone like you having a positive attitude and an unfettered, unshakable belief that good will eventually triumph over evil. And for you to use your voice and put up a fight for what you believe in? Well, I think that would make their blood boil even more. But like I said, fighting isn't for everyone, and it's definitely not for me. I, I can tell you that much for certain. Because otherwise, we would all be fighting at all times, and that would be exhausting. And likewise, it's exhausting to let the perpetual decline of humanity shackle you to your bed, with your eyes locked on a glowing rectangle feeding you the daily obituaries. Spend a day feeling your emotions, bathe in your angst, and maybe even flip off a Nazi, and then take another day to just shut it all off. I love to use video games, or music, or making dumb videos that somehow make people happy. Other people like books, and movies, and adventuring, and 
making bad decisions for the night, and still others like to educate the youth, run for office, or simply tip a little extra when you go out to eat, give someone's car a jump start, return a shopping cart, be a butterfly that flaps its wings one time and sets off a chain reaction of positivity and love and happiness. Tear at the very fabric of what's accepted by the abstraction that is society, and sew together a new form of love with a bond made from the strongest threads. One of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite musicians of all time, Maynard James Keenan, goes like this. Life is too short not to create something with every breath we draw. And I think the concept of that is brilliant, but I don't think it needs to be limited to art. I think it can be extended to all facets of life. Write a full-fledged song, or just put together a neat little poem. Paint a gorgeous picture, or just keep drawing the same angular S that you've been drawing since middle school. Release a revolutionary album that changes the way everyone looks at the world. Or create a pocket of reality that only you can peer into and understand, because it's yours. Create art, or create peace, love, and understanding. Create happiness in both you and other people. And do it every day, because the time we have and the capabilities we have to approach life in whatever unique way we decide is best for us is a blessing. And I think just the acknowledgement of that fact alone reels in more positivity into our lives in ways that we could never imagine. If you're feeling stuck in your current situation or even being abused and you can't seem to find a way out, uh, hang in there because I was there too and I am not done figuring stuff out for myself, not even close, but just having the willpower to say I want better for myself even if you're not doing anything right now specifically that will help in the long term, even just having the belief in the deepest, darkest parts of your mind that things will get better someday, even though I can't see how it will yet, will make it true. I can guarantee that. And everything you're going through right now will wind up just being a piece of the puzzle in the end. You will learn so much from this. You will develop that one in a million sense of empathy that I was talking about before. And you will be able to look back and say, I guess it was all worth it, wasn't it? We are in the middle. Atoms, quarks, and the Planck length are orders of magnitude smaller than our minds can ever comprehend, and the observable universe, parallel timelines, and whatever lies beyond, are orders of magnitude bigger than we can ever imagine. Everything that ever happened before us happened in sequence to create our corner of history, and likewise, what we're all going through today is eventually going to influence whatever happens in the future. Our atoms were birthed from stars and stardust, and over time, that's where our atoms will wind up again, even if our species does destroy itself in the end. You and every part of you will play a role in whatever the universe decides to do with itself next, and whatever life comes after us will look back on us and expand on the knowledge we unlocked to create a better reality for our progeny, and then you and I will be able to sit back, relax, and laugh at how stupid we really were. <laughs>